All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you might potentially use either Google Slides or Google Jamboard as a collaborative feature inside of your synchronous or Zoom sessions. So I'm here currently in my Zoom session with both me and my sample student. And what you might do in this case is either one, you could potentially send students to different breakout rooms, which you have available to you in terms of how to do that in other videos, but we're going to look at purely how you would be able to send out a link for students to be able to access this to collaborate on. So most often people would recommend that you do this through the chat. So if I come over here where it says chat, I would go ahead and place or drop the link that I want my students to use. Now, again, what is it that I'm trying to send them to do? So let me go ahead and minimize this screen currently. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my Google web browser. Now here I have a few different options. I could go to things I had ahead of time already ready to potentially use. Here's just a sample of some of these interactive Google slides that you might choose to use. The one that I had already queued up was this one. And in this case, I'm going to send my students to different breakout rooms. And when they get there, they're going to have to be able to respond to the prompt or to the question that I've already pre-entered here. Now, when my students get there, they're going to be able to click directly on their number, whether it be their actual number in the class, or in this case, because I plan to use this with a breakout room, my students will be able to say, hey, I'm in breakout room group number three, I'll click on this, and it will send me directly to the slide that looks something like this, where they have a three to indicate that they are in fact in group group three, and then the four different slides, because let's say, for example, I'm putting them into groups of four, and maybe my expectation is that each person will not only answer independently in their own individual section, but they'll also have a chance to be able to discuss before they begin working or responding to the prompt. So how are we going to do this? Um, let's go back to the top. It's imperative that we change the share settings. So right now I'm going to come up to the top Let me move this down a bit and I'm going to click on share. Now when I click on share, you are given different options. More often than not, we're going to want to use the link feature. Now it's defaulted currently to allow only people within our district. You're going to want to change that. So don't go over here to copy link just yet. We're going to come and change that. And so we're going to change this. So instead of it being only people within the district, we're going to have anyone with the link. Okay. So I've changed it to anyone with a link. Now it's important to note over here, what does this say? Anyone with a link can do what? In this case, anyone with a link is a viewer, meaning they can see what I have written or what I've shown. But I want my students to be able to work and collaborate on this. So I'm gonna change this from viewer to editor. So now I just changed the permissions to anyone with the link is now an editor. So I'm gonna be sure to come up here and copy the link, click done. And I'm going to go back into my Zoom session. Now that I'm here, I can go ahead and paste this link and send it out. And so this means that any student that clicks on this will have access to that interactive slides that I was just showing. Now I'm going to end temporarily this actual Zoom session so that I can show you from the teacher's end why you might want to be able to send types of activities like this and what it would look like is you as the teacher while your students are working. Now I will note, you don't have to use breakout rooms to be able to allow this type of interaction. However, if you are planning to use this with breakout rooms, please be sure that you have already sent this link out before you push the students into the individual breakout rooms. Again, make sure that you share this link and that all students have successfully accessed and opened this link before you send them away to their breakout room. I'm gonna go ahead and take my other device, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I have this other device. Let's say the student is working in group number one and they are typing their response. And you can start to see there the little image of my student that's starting to enter the information that is there. Okay. Now this might be great if you want to click on this one individual student and you can see what they are typing and what they are doing. But realistically, we want to be able to keep an eye on as many students as possible and how the groups are progressing, not only to hold them accountable, but also to be able to ensure that they're on topic and they may not need additional support. So if that is the case, 
you're going to want to come up to the view as the teacher and instead of looking at what we're looking at now we want to change it to grid view so in grid view as the teacher I'm able to see whatever my students are at so let's just say this is finished and my student let's say for example in a different group is on slide number uh, group six and they are typing their own individual response I'm gonna start to see what they are doing now having used this before with classrooms and also with other educators I found that this is a really useful tool because I'm gonna get a quick idea of who is working and who may need additional support so as the teacher if I chose to use this as a breakout room while I can't have my eyes and ears in every single room you would be able to see in the moment who might need to require you as the teacher to visit that potentially breakout room then maybe they have some questions maybe they're off task this is a quick way to monitor in terms of where your students are at and how they're working so again how did I access this view I went to view and rather than looking at the normal view of a Google Slides I changed it to grid view so that I could see and, and this would have pretty much in real time show you where all of the students are working and how they're performing now before we end this thing I do want to point out that after your students are finished working you've given them enough opportunity to do whatever you need I really recommend that you adjust the share settings and that all you do is come back up to the top or if you recall correctly we had already changed it to anyone with the on the internet with this link can edit I'm gonna click this and click change and I can either change them to being only a viewer if I wanted them to continue to see their work or I might change this and say it is now currently restricted that no longer can students view nor long or nor any longer can students be able to edit and why might I suggest that is simply because as we know if you leave that open at a later time students may go in and potentially write inappropriate or do things that you may not want so again after you're finished with your work or you've concluded in the lesson I do recommend that you adjust the share settings again either to viewer so that they no longer can write or type on or you can go ahead and do what I did which is restricted meaning they no longer have access so this was an example of how you might use it with regards to Google Slides and like I said there's a lot of variations in terms of what you might do but what if you wanted to do this with a Google Jamboard well you could do the same thing with a Jamboard you would come up to the Google Jamboard and here's an example of one I have let's go ahead and open one because this is a Google product just like Google Slides in terms of how you share it would be the same you would come up to the top right corner click on share and adjust remember it defaults to anyone within HLP you want to change that to anyone with the link and be sure that it's marked as editor and once you have that you can copy the link and just as we had done before with the Google Slides be sure to place that inside of the chat in your zoom session after having done that students would be able to come in and work on whatever you have for them Now I want to be clear that this is when you are giving students access to be able to all work simultaneously meaning what one student may be working independently here and another student may be working independently there now having experienced this sometimes students aren't clear in terms of where they're supposed to be working I've tried to do my best to indicate to the students with having numbers again it could be the number of the individual student or it could rather be the number of the group now one of the things I've noticed is with Jamboard you're limited to 20 of these jams or 20 of these individual slides so if you have a class most likely more than 20 not each person will be able to have their own board in which case this is why I've gone in and individualized or cut each of these in half or you may choose to have them work in pairs if that's the case then you could easily say oh, okay you're in group three each one of this represents one of your sides of the board for you to work now I know that there's some tutorials that are out there with regards to how to use Jamboard but I just want to make sure you understand the distinction between Google Slides and Google Jamboard and the biggest thing is the ability for students to be able to write in Google Slides students are able to type their responses they're able to grab pictures um, and insert those just as well but the ability for students to be able to actually write whether it be with the mouse or with a stylus that is specific to the Jamboard and you can see that students are writing their responses um, and I can see so just want to make sure I point that out and again for Jamboard at least if you're not familiar it's easy for you to be able to navigate by coming to the top and moving side to side clicking on whatever individual slide or jam you want to use and there you go okay so again what we have just shown is the ability for you within your zoom session 
whether you choose to use it as a breakout room or whether you choose just to use it as a whole group collaborative opportunity to be able to take either a Jamboard or a Google Slides, change the share settings, and be able to share those with students so that all of our students might potentially work and collaborate and we can see all of the wonderful things and thinking that they are using. Thanks so much. If you need additional assistance, please be sure to reach out to any one of us Tectosis. Have a great day.